What's up guys? Welcome to Grease Lightning Reactions. We're here for Sweetness and Lightning Episode 3. So, once again, I ended this episode just a few moments ago, and I ended up smiling, man. It's, that's what this show does for you. If you're feeling down, if you just want to have a really good time, just laying like a laid-back experience, this is the one. So, this episode... We start with Kotori waking up in her home. Not much, you know, she, she's just starting her day. Comes downstairs, is already a meal prepared for her. Of course, every meal that she receives is going to be top-notch because, of course, her mom is the owner of a restaurant. She is the person who's cooking all the food there, too. Um, and all this, this uh, knowledge that is being passed on to Inazuka-sensei and... Um, what all the instructions that they're reading are obviously from the mom, so of course it's gonna be great. Now, also there's all there's a little note, and it says that the mother is gonna be on TV at 7:15, and 7:15 was like the exact moment that she opened the note. So she opens the freaking cell phone, and what do we have? Her mom's on air. For for a second, I thought. She was embarrassed because she was getting a shout out on national TV. Like, you couldn't have thought of something better. But then we realized later that I didn't even notice, but she's wearing a sailor outfit. And I don't know if it's because she's wearing such a weird tropey outfit or if it's because of her later comment. She's like, I've never even wore a sailor outfit. And she looks really good in it. I don't know if it's like some kind of mother daughter rivalry I don't know what's going on but she was obviously clearly embarrassed and she lets uh, Inazuka sensei know when she's at school now at the same time um, we also have um, Sumugi and sensei waking up in the morning uh, he's trying to prepare breakfast he gives it to his daughter and it, it turns out that he's He's not at that point yet where he where he wants to be. He's still burning eggs. He's letting things boil over. He's having to fix his mistakes still. But the miso soup that he helped make, I, I think he made it with um, the pork dish they did last time. He has improved the taste of that significantly. Now there were little ingredients inside it that like stuck together and stuff, which is he's not perfect, but he's improving, and that's clear because even Sumugi is enjoying herself. Now, from then we go on to a daycare scenario. Now this is something that I I personally never ever experienced. I never went to a daycare. I never went to kindergarten, uh, not kindergarten, uh, preschool or anything like that. So. The, the kids being around each other is something that I don't get to see very often. And uh, Sumigi is basically a very, very popular kid here. She is fun. She has really, she's really creative. And she's always doing something serendipit like serendipitously. So it's just like, you know, spur of the moment. Something's happening. Uh, it's probably Sumugi. She's the center of attention at all times. Now, um... The one thing is, this perfect experience, she it, it has the idea of making a hamburger patty. She's been wanting to make it this entire, she wants, she's wanted a hamburger the whole time. She's been asking over and over, a oh, hamburger, hamburger. And then she is making one out of clay at this school, but she's running out of, she's running out of material to make it. She could make the patty, but she couldn't make the buns. She can't make any sides. She can't make anything else. So... Being the popular kid that she is, all the other kids don't really mind giving her more clay. At the same time, we have a couple kids in the corner who seem really, really jealous. Now, they're kids. Of course, you can't really blame them. But when you see a bratty kid, you got to call them out, right? So these kids are obviously out for Kotori. Not Kotori. Uh, Tsumugi. Um, and tell the teacher you know she stole all that material and she's like no I didn't everyone gave it to me right right and they all agree but the thing is there is inequality established here she is favored heavily now here's the thing I don't think any of the kids were even playing with the clay she was the only one doing it usually most kids have a great imagination um, 
so clay is the perfect material to do it but then there's also other games i think sumugi is just the one that is the best at utilizing that stuff so she's still messing with it plus she has an objective in mind which we don't find out until later excuse me but so so these kids are probably not even playing with this with this stuff but seeing that she's getting so much attention seeing that she has so much clay seeing everyone happy with her obviously make the kids a little unhappy they tell on her um say so even though they may have given it to her it's still uneven like you know we cut back sensei's at school doing his own stuff at his desk um, he's looking up how to make a hamburger in real life. You know, he, he he wants to actually make one because he feels he let down his child. At the same time, we get a call from the daycare telling him to show up. Now, he shows up. This kid is crying. Sumugi has, like, a pillow on her face. And she's saying, you know, he's crying. He's like, oh, she scratched me. It seems like, I don't know if she actually pushed him or not, but this kid has a tiny bit of a scratch. He's... It feels like he's he's making it up a little bit. Uh, sensei comes on, comes there, tries to get them to apologize and make up and stuff, but nothing's happening. This kid's mom shows up. Obviously, this is a something that he always happens to do because he's like, "Oh, you made another." She she says, "You made another girl cry. How could you?" Why? It's your fault, isn't it? And he's like, no, it's not. It's not my fault this time, Mom. Please. Please. And, it's, of course, it's, it, it's his fault. It's his fault. Um, so we leave this daycare with nothing resolved. Get home. Sumugi is not in the mood at all. Um, so, Sensei, already having it in mind, he decides to go to the restaurant with Kotori and make a hamburger. Now, this scene was really fun to watch. For one, everything looked amazing. Two, it seemed like something a lot of people can make. Um, just like if you wanted to try it, like the rice. The thing is, this show shows really wonderful food. And it's food that everyone can make if they want to try it. The thing that's different, like I, a lot of people compare this to Food Wars, like that's a competition show and it's super elaborate, like you could probably make those things, but you probably need to be a pretty good chef to make a lot of those things and you won't make it as close to that quality. But here, you know, a lot of other beginner chefs, people that may not like to cook or, you know, just find themselves having to cook, I personally love to cook. Um, you know, I, I like making things and seeing things succeed, um, seeing other people happy, it's why I'm doing YouTube, you know. It, seeing more people subscribe, seeing more people comment, having discussions with each other, knowing that people care, you know, that that makes me happy. Same thing when I cook for people. If they're like, wow, you're a really good cook. I didn't know you could cook. Or, you know, I, I want to make it for myself. Or if I need to, I, I know I can rely on myself. That's a little bit of what, what Sensei feels like because he wants to provide for Sumugi. He wants to be as good or close to his wife uh, before she passed away and he wants to fill in that void so they're working together little things stand out a lot um, you know they're they're uh, cutting uh, they don't even know how to cut an onion they don't even know that onions make you cry so they're <laughs> wearing goggles um, pro tip if you want to make onions not as like teary you need to soak them and soak them in water now that I'll get some of the acidity out of it. And I don't, it doesn't change the taste too much, at least not in my case, but it won't make you cry. Or you just man up and you go, you just freaking get through it. You get through it. It's not terrible, but it, it's annoying. Um, the other thing is we see um, the worry of uncooked food, undercooked food. Now, the thing in Japan is I've never been the type to eat like sushi, uh, sashimi, octopus, a lot of these things usually are very, very raw. Um, and I, I just don't like the texture and stuff and I don't really get what the, the, the taste, like, you know, what the, what the peel of all that stuff is. Sushi, I've only had one sushi that I've ever, 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 ever liked and that was like an egg sushi. Because you know, I didn't have fish in it. And I was like, okay, this is okay. Um, 
But anyway, the the, the deal is that I gave that gives me concern for being undercooked, slimy and stuff. And sensei is more, uh, you know, with beef, you don't want any bacteria still around. You don't want to get her sick with food poisoning. Um, he says, you know, she's not good with upset stomachs and stuff like that. So there's a real concern for that. So, you know, they have an alternative method. I think they said it was like a, like a stewing, stewing, I think. Is that what they said? Steaming? Something like that. It's, it's another method to cook it. So they're making everything. Uh, at the same time, uh, Sensei learns a little bit about parenting, actually, from Samugi. Not from Samugi, from Kotori. You know, she's something, you know, listen to your daughter. Don't assume things. And that's that's a great lesson for anyone. Um, when you're when you're in a stressful situation or you're having to, like, console someone, one of the most powerful things you can do is listen to their opinions, listen to their worries, and then respond accordingly. You don't want to assume right off the bat because you don't know if you're addressing something wrong. You don't know if you're making it like worse uh you know communication is key and one of the key parts of communication is listening so great lesson for him to learn a little bit pay close attention to your daughter the other thing is um we get the moment you know when they're all done putting finishing touches they put like an egg on it it looks fantastic even though i don't like hamburgers it looks fantastic because of all the smelty sauce so Miki tries it, she starts crying, uh, you know, she, she's had a rough day, but now she's got this hamburger, man. She's not a thief, she's not a thief, um, and uh, everyone's real, real happy. And we learned that this is actually Sensei's freaking birthday, and Sumugi had actually been uh, preparing the hamburger because she wanted to give him the hamburger as a present and just the thought of that makes him swell up with pride makes him really really happy he's getting a he's getting a birthday present from his daughter Kotori's over here freaking out like what the hell what, what do i give him? i didn't know it was his birthday she takes the best part of the egg it looks undercooked to me uh scrambled eggs usually supposed to be like that not scrambled uh it's not scrambled what kind of sunny side up is that what it is Anyways, it was very liquidy. She, she's like, this is the best part. I offer this to you. And he's like, no, it's okay. And then she's like, oh, you're refusing my gift. That's no good. And then we cut to black. So I'm laughing at this, you know, like the happiness that is being portrayed between, um, not laughing at, like smiling with the happiness that is portrayed between daughter and parent. And at the same time, I'm laughing at Kotori's little little ideal that she's going uh, ordeal not ideal ordeal that she's going through in the corner so overall a lot of things i always think i'm not gonna have enough to talk about and i'm here i am talking for like 13 minutes this show is real good this show is real good and i i i'm happy with my decision to just chill watch it on my own and just talk to you guys about it because i feel like i always have a lot to talk about um whether that's plot synopsis or my well plot synopsis and thoughts on how I relate to it and like just things that I feel like this anime does well maybe th I haven't found anything that it does bad yet come on now it's doing great it's doing great all right guys if you guys enjoyed this review please like and subscribe and as always thank you for watching I'll see you guys next time